Hey, welcome back, guys. Mm -hmm. So we installed Laravel 8 successfully. So now what we have to do is let's go to our newly installed folder here. I named it uh, my blog, obviously. So this is the content in there. Now what I want to do is grab this folder and drop it in my sublime text. That way I have a nice thing here. That's number one. And then number two is, like I said before, it's better to make a copy of this uh, folder so that you don't have to, uh, every time you start a new project, you don't have to load it from the internet. So let me do a copy and just paste it right here before I make any uh, modifications uh, whatsoever. So it's going to make a copy and when it's done, we're going to rename that copy to Laravel since we that way we can remember what it's about uh, this one is just my blog so that way uh, every time where's the photo well there it is so my blog copy there but once it finishes uh, copying I can rename this to Laravel 8 that way I know what this folder contains and every time I want to start a new project I just copy that Laravel 8 paste it again the same way I'm doing here and then rename the new project to whatever the name of my project is. So here I'm just going to say uh, Laravel 8, like so, and leave it there. So this is the clean copy. That way I don't have to start from, I don't have to download it every time. But the one we are using is my blog. And this is the one right here. Uh -huh. So as you can see, the file structure is the same. The only difference with uh, the version I was using with this one is that this one has uh, the major difference though. It's not the only difference. This one has a models uh, folder. The other one did not. So that's why I needed, uh, because we're going to be dealing with models soon. That's why I needed to upgrade. All right. So now I want us to talk about uh, database connections. So how exactly do we connect to a database and show some result? Okay. So now, in order to be able to show some result from the database, of course, we're going to need to create a database of our own. So let's come back here. Now, there are many ways to do this in Laravel. Laravel can do the uh, database creation for you. It's actually the preferred method to do that because there's a thing called migration, which we're going to learn uh, a little bit later. So a migration is just uh, database versions. So let's say you have um, uh, a, user a user's database and then eventually you upgrade, you add more tables and all that stuff. But if for some reason you say, okay, this is not going well, I want to revert back to the version I had previously, then you can use a migration to migrate back to that version. That's why it's preferred that you use those for creating a database. But, you know, being me, I like doing things manually so let's create our own database from scratch. So I'm going to go to phpMyAdmin. This is localhost slash phpMyAdmin. Of course, make sure that your ZAMP and um, ZAMP and Apache are running. ZAMP is running. Apache MySQL. Okay. <clears throat> so you go to localhost slash phpMyAdmin, and then let's click here on the new to create a new. Uh, a, a new database. So we're just going to call it my blog, just like the uh, project we are doing, and then just click create. Don't put spaces in your database names there. Use an underscore if you need to, but definitely no spaces. So here I want us to create a users table. That way we can uh, have some uh, users. So I'll just leave these default settings and click go. So my blog has users. So in the users table, I want to have an ID at least because that's required. Without an ID, we can't edit anything in here. And so, and then we have the uh, username, of course. And then we will have, uh, I don't know, a password of some kind. So username, password, and then um, what else? Mm -hmm. Maybe the date, something like that. Yeah, keep it simple. So here I'll leave this uh, on int. And username, of course, is a variable character, just like password. We'll put password at 64, just in case we need to hash it. 
and then we'll put the length of the username maybe at 20 characters and then the date we'll just uh, select uh, date time and leave it be then let's click auto increment on id to make sure that uh, we don't have to deal with the id the database will add an id for us automatically and make sure that you have that set to primary index okay and uh yeah i think that's about it uh, let's see here okay so hit save and we are good to go so we have a users table now only thing we need to do is just add some index to the username because we'll be using it to find records when we are logging in and then the index for the password i think we should add maybe an email or something let's add an index to the date as well uh, no 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 okay so sometimes you may need to select the no value here to make sure that each uh, column can can get a no value but uh, I don't think that's necessary because all these columns you only do that if you expect that uh, the column may not have some data when you want to insert into the database but for us we need a username every time we also need a password so if those are not there then the record shouldn't exist so we don't need to do that but let me click go here so I can create one more column I'm going to call this one email and I will have a variable character for it uh, I don't know maybe 100 characters will do because some people have crazy long emails I'll save that and there we go so we have email now and very good so we have a database now so let's go to the browse section here and we see that there's zero records here but not to worry we can create our own records here we can do that with the sign up but uh, that will waste too much time so what I will do is just go to insert here click insert now the id is auto increment <coughs> excuse me so i don't need to do the, anything with that i'm just going to uh, add some names in here password wait a minute why is the password so big anyway so i'm going to just add password there and email um, uh, yahoo.com so you can add whatever records you want here just ignore the id like that and uh, the password obviously password and uh, date well did we have a date okay there we did email uh, john at uh, yahoo.com mm -hmm. now i hit go once i do that now i have two records and it has shown me the uh, the query that was created in order to insert this this is the beauty of um, mysql once you do something on the database it shows you the query that was created in order to to do that action so you can save this query for future reference just to see how things work under the hood so let me click browse here again now as you can see we have two records here which is uh, well and good so we can try and read these records from uh, laravel okay so how exactly do we do that now the first step to do is to create a controller let me come back here for a second so why do we need to create a controller well like i said earlier if i go to the routes here and go to web.php since this is what displays uh, a page it's not a good idea to load things from here though it can be done just to emphasize you can do it from here if you want you can do database reading here but it defeats the purpose of having a um, uh, having the mvc style of things so we are not going to be doing that so now what i want to do is to create a page that shows us what the users are so here i'll create route like this and i want to use the get variable because i'm not going to be posting things on that page i'm just reading from the database so it's going to be a, a get and then here i'll say users like that that will be the the thing that somebody needs to type in the url in order for me to get to this page and then the actual view um, instead of displaying the view here we're just going to add an array so that we can add an actual controller so here I'm going to say uh, the controller, we're going to call it user 
users something like this users controller now you don't have to put the word controller you can call the controller anything so users controller something like that and then put two full colons like that and put class to tell it that this is a class and then comma then you're going to put the function that you you want it to um to use in that in that controller class so keep in mind we haven't created this controller class yet so now the function i'm going to create a function called index for lack of a better word it can be anything there so all we are doing here is telling it that when somebody types users in the URL, send them to this users controller. So I will save that. But the thing is, this users controller does not exist. So we have to create that users controller. So what do we do? Let me go to my blog. If you're using Windows, you can uh, hold down shift in this folder, right click, and then you're going to have open command, command window here. So you click. And then you to open with the link already leading to this folder but if you're using a mac or something else just open your command line and then navigate to the folder the my blog folder that's enough so once we are in here we want to run this file called artisan in that folder so it's a p it's a php file so we we'll run it with php and say artisan like so and what i want to do is make a controller so make full colon controller and then what will be the controller name? It's going to be users controller, like so. Enter. Yes, so let's give it a, a, a second. Controller created successfully. Okay, so we are done with Artisan. I'm just going to type exit and it will close that. Okay, so now that we have our controller, let's come back here and check for it. So I'm going to go to app HTTP controllers and there it is users controller mm -hmm. very very nice yes so now we have to use to add a link to it here so i'm going to type use under that one and i'm going to say up so inside up we go to the http folder uh, please mind the capitalization there and then we go to controllers like that and then slash and then what's the controller name? It's users, oh, no underscore. Users controller, yes, like so. And then a semicolon. Mm -hmm. So that way we are importing that class so that it can be used here. Okay, so save that and uh, we are good. So we've created a controller and we've uh, assigned uh, something to take us there. So now let's open the controller itself, the controller file, and this is what it is here, right? So in this controller file now, I can do anything. I can just say echo, uh, let's say here we are, something like so. Pretty good. So let's come back here to our page and let's give it a shot. So I'm going to say use, uh, is it users or user? I'm not really sure. Syntax error, unexpected token echo okay <clears throat> so it's correct uh yeah so it's showing me this error right here and it's showing me showing me the code where the error is which is right there this is quite neat actually so it's telling me uh this is what's going on here so what i can go do now the reason uh it's giving me an error is because you can't just have some code in there in the class you need to have a function so let's create a function let's make it public shall we public function index yes <clears throat> yeah because why did i put the did i name it index and that's because in the route that's what i told it to look for so of course there we have the index and once it finds that uh, function it can now echo here we are so let's come back hopefully there are no errors and as you can see here we are Okay, so now how exactly do we read from the database? Well, in order for us to read from the database, we have to import the database class. Now, like I told you, if you see this word illuminate, it means whatever we're importing is coming from the vendor folder. So if we go to the vendor folder here, and then let's go to this uh, folder named... Uh, wait a minute wait a minute uh, i was looking for the support uh, folder 
apparently I am lost. So let's go to facade, this one right here. Facade. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, this is the part where I get completely lost because I can't find what I'm looking for. Okay, but not to fear, not to fear. So what you do when you are lost uh, in this situation, you type laravel.com, right? Go to laravel.com, click on the documentation. This is why the documentation is here. And you're going to end up on a page like this. Now, on this page here, there's a list of things here. So you click on database, getting started. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you see migrations, uh, query builder, and eloquent there, very good stuff. But anyway, um, once you get here, you're going to see all the information that is required. So what we are looking for specifically is down here where we create a controller. So forget all this, this is about SQLite. Uh, let's go keep running down here and the year we could we get to where it says running SQL queries mm -hmm. So how exactly do we run these things? So what we have to import is illuminate support facades Yeah, I knew it was support somewhere But uh, it's weird that I can't find the folder. But anyway Let's try it. Yeah, why not? So I'm going to duplicate this part here use illuminate but then i'm going to change that to support and then change that to facade like that and then use db like so so what we are doing here is we're just importing the db class right hold on a second here hold on hold on there's something I want to see. Where is letter I? Uh, yeah, completely. Oh, this is why I, I made the mistake. You see, I have to go inside the Laravel folder. Oh my God, I'm getting uh, old. So there we go. So you go to Laravel framework and then source. And then inside source here, there's illuminate. Yes, so we're getting somewhere. So you see this illuminate this is the folder right here so the moment you type that uh it means you're importing something that exists here so illuminate and then you go to where we're we going we're going to support the support and then we're going to facades right and then inside there actually there's an s there so this wasn't going to work facades and then uh we're not going to facade.php but db dot php so where is db dot php there we go you see it there mm -hmm. so this is the file we are importing right here so the reason i'm showing you this is just maybe to improve your understanding on what's happening and why you are importing those things so what we are doing is we are importing this class now this class extends facade right and facade is right over here mm -hmm. so facade contains all the uh the functions that we need does it not yes so this is an abstract class which contains all the stuff that we need in order to uh, connect to a database okay so that knowledge is that knowledge mm -hmm. so let's come back to our controller here for a second so we've imported the db facade so how do we read from the database well it's quite easy we are going to say db like that and connect it in a static manner and say select if we're going to select something from the database now usually here we're just going to say select or from users that's the only query we need but then we need to send this data somewhere right so i'm just going to say return before we do anything else so let's just return this data right mm -hmm. so i'll save that but there's a slight problem now that problem is we did not do a database configuration. So it doesn't know what database we are reading from, etc., etc. So we're going to do that in the next video. I'll see you then.